the High Tech Nomad here, and today we're going to talk about running Windows on your Samsung DeX station or DeX dock. So you're not actually running Windows. Obviously, we're not loading, going to load Windows onto the phone or anything like that. We're talking about using Windows in a virtual mode, and we're going to take a look at four solutions. Three of the solutions require that you already have a Windows computer or have access to one, and then one of them is purely uh, virtual. You don't have to have anything else. So the first three require that you have a computer, and if you want to be able to tap into it at any point in time, it has to be on, it has to be running, but it doesn't have to be out and about. And by that I mean mine is down in the basement. It's down in the basement. There's no keyboard on it. There's no monitor on it. There's no mouse on it. It's basically, I set it up and there's a cable coming from the ethernet port into the modem and it sits on the shelf and it's on 24 seven because I can reboot it, I can do whatever I need to do uh, remotely. So when we looked at this before, the three that we, um, well, let's look at the three. The first one is TeamViewer. TeamViewer is probably the easiest one for you to do. It's cheap because it's free. It takes about 15 minutes to set up and you can't mess it up. Basically, you're going to go to your machine and you're going to load the team. You're going to go to teamviewer.com. You're going to load the software for TeamViewer on your PC, on your, your Windows computer. It's going to give you a code. You're then going to come back to your deck station. You're going to load the TeamViewer app from the Google Store. You're going to put that code in and bada boom, bada bing, bada boom, Bob's your uncle. You'll be able to talk to it. Not only will you be able to talk to it, on your, um, not only will you be able to talk to it on your, when you're when you're on your same network, you'll be able to talk to it from anywhere. So you're all set as far as uh, that is concerned. I'm just trying to get to the desktop here. As you can see, it's um, it's responsive, but there are still a couple little issues. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble as far as um, getting it to respond to what I'm doing. Now, part of this may also be the fact that I have all three of these programs running at the same time. But you can see it comes up. There is a secondary bar down the bottom, if you take a look at that, on the secondary bar. And it, it has, you know, tools and touchscreen and just, sometimes you have to click on that to get the piece to come up. But this is a workable solution. This is fine, all right? So this is TeamViewer. Um, I would say if you had to go with one of them and you didn't, and you, you weren't really good at setting things up, that would be fine. The next one is, I'm going to use is go to assist. Now go to assist is made by Citrix. So basically it's the same as log me in. Um, they, this is just the professional version of that. So you can see, we go ahead, we click and we get right in there and Again, what we're going to find is it's fairly responsive. There's no issues with that, but we do have a little, actually there's the window from the team viewer. So we do see, we have a little bit of, because it has to have the go to assist at the top and the bottom, um, this is the best we can do. So every so often when I have to get something down the bottom, I have to go and drag this up before I can click on one of the bottom pieces. But other than that, it's okay. So again, um, log me in. There is a charge that's uh, involved in that. I'm not sure what, exactly what it was these days. Um, they may have a free trial. They may even have a one machine thing. But in any event, um, so this would be the same, uh, same thing. Instead of just go to assist, it's going to say log me in. So again, this is doable. This is fine. Um, let's take a look at the next one. Now, the next one I did not recommend before, and now I am recommending it. And the reason I'm recommending it is because... Um, there's been a couple of updates to the app itself, and now Dex, once you run it through Dex Max, which we've talked about before, you now will get it in full screen. And that is the remote desktop client, or we used to call it RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, from Microsoft. So built into your Windows computer is already a remote desktop that's been there for years and years and years. And the way that you access it is by using this remote desktop protocol. And it was again, that was actually sp specifically for that. What they were did it for is so that you would have a really big, good Windows machine, and then you would have some okay, th what they call thin client okay machines, and they would talk to the big machine. And so that way you could have really one really nice machine and a bunch of little small inexpensive machines, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So uh, without further ado, let's go to remote desktop. And we were already in there, so I'm gonna have to just do that once again. And now, uh, since they've done the changes and with Dexmax, this is fine. You can see, whole screen. If someone was to sit down at this machine, they would not know that they were sitting at my Dex station. If I left it like this, they would never know. Responsiveness is, is fine. Um, cut, copy, and paste on the clipboard. So if I cut something on in Windows and I come back to my Dex, it's there, or vice versa. So that's really helpful. I'm sharing files. I'm gonna do a, a, another video on this. I'm sharing files using Dropbox, but also something called Drop Sync, so that the files are not cloud-based. They're actually gonna be on the machines themselves. So basically I have a, I have a folder similar to Google Drive, but Google Drive also has to go up and come down. We'll talk about that in a later video. But I have a drive, all you need to know is I've set up a drive, uh, a folder on the drive that is the same for both of them. So if I put something in there on one side, I can go on the other side and I can pull the file up instantaneously. I don't have to do any waiting or anything like that. So now again, with the updates to RDP and with the updates to Dex Max, being able to run this in full screen without any issue whatsoever, this is now the way I would say to go if you have a computer. Now you have to be running Windows 10 Professional. And one of the things I found out, I was actually a little bent out of shape, is I had a Windows 7 Professional, and when Microsoft was doing the free updates, they updated it to Windows 10, but they updated it to Windows 10 Home. And Home does not have the ability to do remote desktop, so I had to upgrade my Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Professional, so that cost me $100 to do that. Whereas if I had just left it at Windows 7 Professional, I would have had that feature. So. If you have trouble using RDP, check and see if you're running that. If you have a specific question, send me an email and we will, uh, I'll address it and we'll go from there. All right, so the last one is Amazon Workspaces and this took forever to set up. So let me explain to you what it does. Amazon has a number of different cloud-based pieces. A lot of the websites you probably visit are stored on Amazon servers now. So that's not what you know them for probably for shopping. That's what they're actually doing in the cloud computing field. They have just like really, they have like huge server farms and things like that. So in any event, they sell remote computers that you can use. However, when you first try to set them up, you have to go in, you have to set up an account, you have to go in, you have to um, set up a domain, you have to, it's a whole bunch of stuff. So it's not very intuitive. So I guess what they did is they cut a deal with Ingram Micro to resell it. And so what Ingram Micro did is they came out with an app to make it easier for you to use. All right, so let me show you what was supposed to happen and what did happen. So if you go, if you're in on your decks and you click on all apps and you click on the three dots and you click on apps for Samsung decks, you will get this window. This is the stuff that they've curated. If you look, you'll see it says Windows Desktop Free Trial. And you'll see it has one star. I'm gonna, let's just even take a look and see how many downloads it has had. The one star does not install Amazon on web page. Okay, so actually two of us have reviewed it at this point. We've both given, uh, see, I get, there's me, okay? So two of us have reviewed it. And here's what the problem is. When you download this app, it takes you to a web page. When you're on the web page, it asks you, two questions about what, you know, your name, and then it says, do you want small, medium, or large? You want to go with the, either the small or the medium. Anyway, ask your small, medium, or large, and it says, okay, what country, you pick the country, it says, click the button, and you click the button, and you get an error page. It errors out. The web page just says, call your, call your administrator. I've called Samsung, I've called Ingram Micro, and I've called um, uh, Ingram Micro, and I've called Amazon. Basically, none of them want to take responsibility for this. None of them, uh, it, it was actually pretty funny because everybody I talked to was not even aware of this. So meaning, when I called Ingram Micro, they had to go to the webpage and they were like, huh, I didn't even know we were selling this. When I called Samsung, they were like, well, yeah, that's the marketing department. I don't know who's gonna help you with that in Amazon. In any event, I'm gonna tell you what to do to fix it. Because this is the easier way to set it up. You can actually do it through Amazon Workspaces, but it'll take you forever. When you get that error, when so go through this, when you get that error, cut, copy, and paste, cut that URL, highlight it, copy it, go to a new tab, paste that URL, and press enter. 
Don't ask me why, but that's that works. You cannot hit refresh. Refresh will just keep giving you the error. But if you copy that long URL, go to a new tab, paste that URL, and press enter, it'll take you to the next part of the process, which is it just asks you, you know, your email address and, and so on and so forth. So I don't know why they haven't fixed this. You would think that when they put something up and they only have two reviewers, and we both give it one star and we both say there's an error, and nobody's downloading it, that they would uh, be able to figure it out. In any event, after we've done all that, we will get a, you're gonna download the, uh, you're gonna, I'm gonna put my finger on the fingerprint reader. You're going to download the app, which is Amazon Workspaces. That's all we need for that. Let's see. Uh, Amazon Workspaces. Let's see if that's the correct one. No. Let's try that. No. Okay, give me one second. I will put in the right one. Okay, so in any event, once everything's up and running, what, you're, what they're gonna do is give you a virtual computer online. Now it says Windows 2008, Windows Server 20, uh, 2008 R2. That's probably the machine it's on, don't worry about it. This thing thinks it's a Windows 7 computer. So we'll go ahead and we'll maximize this. And it takes a second for it to, to catch up, there we go. And so this is a completely virtual Windows 7 machine that I have full access to. I can load software on it. Um, I can do whatever I want with it. My issues with this are one, it's $30 a month. And well, and I'll explain why that, uh, even the $30 a month doesn't really bother me because if you say, well, if I don't have to have a computer and it's up and it's running and it's all the time, is it worth $30 a month? The answer, for me, the answer is yes. They do have a lower price one, which I think is $10 a month, and then you pay for every minute that you're on, and I don't like those things. If I'm gonna use something, I just wanna have it. I don't wanna have to worry about was I on for five minutes or six minutes. But, um, and I also don't know if you stay on longer, if you need it longer, and you go over your, your, the time that would me make $30, do they charge you 31 or 32? I'll check that out, but in any event. So it's $9 and by the minute, or $30, and you have it. My other issue that I have to double check and see, and I think I'm correct on this, is it shuts off when you disconnect from it. So the machine's not always running. It's only running when you are interfacing with it. For me, that doesn't work because I have some software that's checking my calendar, for example. That has to be running all the time, 24-7. I'm sure they have some facility where you can do that, but in the initial offering that they have here, as soon as I go off, it goes off. Now, the other, it's very responsive, and in fact, uh, one of the crazy things about this is, again, because it's on an Amazon server, let's just run the speed test real quick, because this was pretty spectacular. Look at that, it is pegged out. And this is slow. I actually had it up to 600 megabytes per second the other day. Now, before you start saying, oh, this will be great, I can run my U-Turrent, uh, I wouldn't suggest doing that on this machine because if they, I'm sure it, it violates their terms of service, even though U-Turrent is supposed to be used as a file sharing protocol and you probably are trading in legitimate wares, if you were one of those people that was trying to download movies or so on and so forth, it'd be very easy for them to figure it out and come back to this machine. And so you got a, a much, it's very tempting when you see those kinds of speeds. It's like, dude, I could download a movie in like two minutes and, and be done. It's very tempting, but I would be very cautious about doing that. Although you probably could put a, if you had a VPN software, you could probably load your VPN software on it and go from there. So. I do, I do like this, and if you don't have a Windows machine, this is the way to go. You just have to you know, chalk it up the, the cost to do a business and say, okay, I'm gonna pay $300 a year for my virtual machine, but I have a machine that's on, it's got the latest software, it's super duper fast, and it, you know, I don't have to worry about, a, if you get a virus or there's a problem, you can actually just, um, there's a control panel, you can go back in and, and say, make my machine look like it looked two days ago or three days ago or what have you. So those are our four ways. TeamViewer, good, little, little laggy, but it's okay. It's free. I would go with that. 
log me in for those of you who have logged me in fine that's okay a little you have to make some adjustments for that best of 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 the blessed in class right now is the remote desktop protocol you're going to need to set up your machine and again if you have any questions let me know you're going to need to set up your machine to accept remote desktop protocol you're going to need to get the latest remote desktop protocol client you're going to need to run it through dex max so that you can get a maximized window and then the last one we talked about was Amazon Workspaces if you don't have a computer at all and you want to have one. So you saw in those last two, you know, once I, um, there we go, reconnect. Uh, once you log into those, it's like you have that, that device. So in the remote desktop protocol and in the Amazon Workspaces, it, this is just like I have that machine. I mean, I can just go ahead and do it. You can see. And this is, who knows what this is. This could be in Spain for all I know. Um, and again, it's a, it's a pretty fast, it's a pretty decent machine. And again, the same thing with the remote desktop protocol. Once I go full screen, it's the same as if I was sitting in, in front of a, 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 a Windows machine. So I'm gonna, for me personally, I'm gonna stick with the remote desktop protocol because I obviously already have a machine. It's sitting in the basement, so I'm all set. Um, I guess that's it for right now. If you have any questions, please send, well, if you have any questions, please send them to questions at the High Tech Nomad or put a link in the, uh, or, or put a, um, uh, put a comment down there. And I've actually been pretty good about responding to those comments. Also, if you have a suggestion or a question about something else that you'd like to see me cover, if you want to say, hey, does this work or does that run? Um, I'm ha happy to do that and I'm open to do that. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And again, those, those really help because that's what's driving all these. You see uh, that, you know, I was putting some out before. I'm now, uh, I'm, I'm doing one later on. You're gonna see I have a whole new studio here and this is uh, gonna be a big chunk of my time now, just trying to just put these out. So please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button. If you have a question, let me know. If you have a comment, let me know, good, bad, or whatever. Just don't be too brutal if, if at all possible. And until then, this is the High Tech Nomad signing out.